What's the impact of fast food on injuring our endothelial cell system? It's legendary. Legendary. Fast foods, come on. You know, that fast, fast food diet, you go up, you go to McDonald's, Burger King. Uh, that's, that, is, that just destroys your endothelial cells. Yeah. You said that a whole food plant-based diet would eliminate heart disease. Would it also eliminate strokes? It certainly will go, uh, uh, see there are two types of stroke. Uh, and, and, and embolic stroke or, or rather hemorrhagic stroke because people who have high blood pressure and hypertension and it will help the patients with hypertension have fewer strokes. Uh, the other stroke is the typical ischemic stroke that was the same kind of narrowing of the vessels in the going to the brain or in the brain that we see with, uh, with heart disease. So that can be an enormous benefit to prevent those people from having stroke, yes. Is there a way to stop cancer from spreading if you have it and stop it from coming back for people in remission? I think the only tumor that I know of there that would have a uh, it would be interesting to know that I, I mentioned the, uh, the how little prostate cancer there is in the nation of Japan in 1958. Those 18, 18 cases. It's also interesting that if you look at the observation of uh, uh, I can't think of the name of the surgeon who for years was a, a missionary, Burkett, Dennis Burkett. He was a missionary from England in uh, Africa. He was there for 17 years. During the 17 years that he was there, he saw one patient with cancer of the colon. Huh? And guess what? It was in another missionary. Not in any, not in any of the indigenous population. Now, to the answer that can you re reverse cancer with, with diet? It's pretty, uh, which, what is still lacking is, is a good study where patients come in with breast cancer that may have metastasized to their lung, their liver, or their bone, and have them be on a plant based diet and see if their disease can be arrested and go away. There's some suggestion that it may be slower because the uh, same study that I mentioned to you earlier about growing a petri dish with prostate cancer and introducing serum from somebody who is an omnivore versus somebody who is plant-based and how it would markedly retard the growth. That same study has been shown in a petri dish with breast cancer, but I'm not aware of clinical studies where that's happened because <clears throat> what is really gonna be required is we have got to get farther and farther down into understanding really at the cellular level what it is that keeps that aberrant cell type going something has initiated something has initiated one of our cells into a cancer cell and once that has now been changed that can that cancer cell now is replicating so one way to prevent it obviously is to prevent the the problem in the first place. And the other way is to suddenly uh, somehow uh, get enough knowledge that we can somehow change where that cell is, that is a cancer cell, back into a normal cell because it, this, that template is still there. But I guess the, the honest answer, therefore, is really once it's, once, once it's metastasized, it's going to be very challenging. Uh, even all this chemotherapy we have, uh, once in a while there's a striking result in, with some chemotherapy, but that's the exception rather than the rule. What should a man or woman do if a mammography, MRI, or other diagnostic test finds something in their body that could possibly be malignant? Should they biopsy it? 
Should they remove it? Should they treat with mainstream protocols? Should they consider alternative protocols? Well, I, I think the, I thought about that for a while. <clears throat> what is so absolutely imperative in all these health issues <clears throat> is to have an absolute rock solid diagnosis from which to move forward. So you can get a, a hint, you can get a start by simply an examination. Maybe you can feel something that's abnormal. Maybe you'll see it on an x-ray, but uh, I would, <clears throat> in most of those situations, I think once you have a biopsy and you know actually whether you've got something that is benign and harmless, you can just leave it there. Or maybe it's malignant that ought to be treated. Maybe it ought to be treated with surgery. Maybe it'll have to be radiation. Maybe it'll have to be chemotherapy. But I think what you really want to move from is a rock solid position of knowledge so that all treatment must be predicated on having an absolute solid diagnosis. What can you do to prevent dementia, Alzheimer's and memory loss? Now, this is about 50% of people who are over by 80, by 85, 50% of people will have dementia. Now, that's a hell of a reward for a lifetime of hard work or what have you. And <clears throat> as this has been more and more studied, there are some uh, persons who perhaps unfortunately have an inherited gene, APOA4, which may make them <clears throat> more prone to develop their uh, dementia. Uh, but if you look at uh, books like The Alzheimer's Solution uh, by doctor, the doctors Shirzai, uh, Dean and Aisha Shirzai, <clears throat> there are ways, um, nobody I think has really yet honestly reported and being able to reverse <clears throat> established dementia or Alzheimer's. However, what appears to be important to prevent it, that is one of the earliest signs of dementia is mild cognitive impairment, okay? And if you can take these patients at the time that they are diagnosed first with mild cognitive impairment, and if they eat plant-based exercise, maintain social interaction, especially with friends, avoid sleep apnea. These are some of the absolute uh, key things <clears throat> that seem to push back and delay uh, this progression uh, into dementia and Alzheimer's. <clears throat> 